Hello and welcome back to Handmade Originals. Today I'm going to show you how to make these absolutely beautiful, I'll just come a bit closer so you can see it, hope I'm not bragging, these absolutely beautiful silk roses um, and I'm going to do it by stiffening the silk with gelatine and then hand sewing them together. Um, but I hope that you'll look at the end result and think that's really worth the effort and actually it's not really that difficult. So let's get started. Um, the first thing you need is a container like this and it's got to hold about 450 mil. If these are all just rough um, measurements, you don't need to be that precise about it. Anyway, here's some boiled water. I'm going to fill this to 450 mil, which if you're American is about 16 fluid ounces. So that's there. That's actually too hot to handle at the moment, that water. So I'm just going to put my gelatine in. And I'm going to put in a pretty heaped teaspoonful like this. Incidentally, you must always add the gelatin to the water and not the other way around. Actually, I'm going to put, I'm going to put about one and a half in. Why not? And then you stir it in so that it's all dissolved. And then you leave it before you do anything because if you put your hands in that, you'll burn them. And you will have to put your hands in to fish out the petals which we're going to make in a minute. So I'm just going to stir that. If you put too much gelatin in, you run the risk of getting a saturated solution so you'll end up with little bobbles of gelatin in which you don't want. You want it to all dissolve. I'm just going to leave that to carry on. So dissolving. while the water is cooling down, the next thing you have to do is to go through your house and find every single spoon that you have big spoons, small spoons, medium spoons if you've got them, and lay them out on the table. And if you don't want the table to get wet, put some newspaper or something underneath it. The next thing we have to do is to prepare our petals for our rose. Now, the first thing you'll need is a small piece of sponge like this. And what you're going to do with this, this is going to build the centre of the rose. So I'm just going to literally cut into it cut off a piece like that which is jumping away. That's probably too big so I'm just going to cut that in half. This doesn't have to be a precise science as you can see and all I really want is a sort of rough teardrop shape. Just a, like a sort of bud shape I guess. There we are, a very rough bud shape just to form the centre of the rose. This will give it a nice shape when we're putting it all together. Now I'm going to put that to one side so I don't lose it. Um, and then what I've done here, because it's not very interesting watching me just cut things out, here is my piece of silk. This is just lining silk, which is very thin and floaty without much substance to it at all. And what I've done is I've cut three strips, um, and I'll show you the measurements, although really you can just do this by eye. So this one is, this, that strip was about four and a half to five centimetres in depth. The medium sized one is about four and the small one is three and a half. So about half a centimetre between the height of each one. And then I've folded them up and I've cut them so I've ended up with squares. If I don't have enough squares here and I've got, let's see how many, these are going to be the petals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got eight. So if I've got too many, I can make another rose. If I haven't got enough, I can just make some more. Now I'm going to cut them into petal shapes. It hasn't helped, I've just separated them all. But anyway, again, particularly the smaller ones don't need to be so specific, so accurate. So what I'm going to do is going to cut the corner off, and I'm just going to... You can make yourself a template and do this, but personally, I don't think you need to. Make a little dent in the middle there, and go round, and then just come in a bit there. So there we are. That's that's. I'll show you here. That's roughly the sort of shape you want. So those are my little ones. And I'm going to feel like the three bears here. I'm going to do my medium-sized one. Again, I'm going to put my thumb in the middle. I'm going to come round like this. Try and make it a nice curve, not with straight or pointy edges. 
and then it comes in a bit at the bottom. It's almost like a heart shape, but not quite going down to a point. There we are, that's the medium sized one. Uh, here's the big one. Stop here. machine let's go back like like that right so here I have my three sizes of petal now if you wanted to you could construct your rows out of these just like that but I want them to have a bit more shape so that they hold their shape like this so I can curl the edges like that and it actually looks really so much more like a real if I took against my jumper like a real life live rose. So what I'm going to do with these is stiffen them up a little bit. Oh, that one's gone a bit berserk. If you get one like that, don't worry about it. Just shape it individually because like everything else in life, nothing is perfect. They're not all identical. They're all individual. And that's, that's what makes them interesting. And again, this one, that's gone a bit loony. So just take the corners off, make it round. Now I've cut all my petals out. So I'm going to separate them all, make sure I've got no peculiar one, that one's a little bit square, so I'm just going to round it off on that one. And then I'm going to, having separated them so that they absorb gelatin on gelatin water on both sides, I'm going to put them all in my hot water here, which has got my dissolved gelatin in it. I'm just going to scatter those in, like little rose petals that they are. And I've got my wooden spoon here. And I'm going to move them round so they do actually absorb the gelatin water on both sides. Right, it's very thin, so you don't... Some people say you need to wet it first. If it was a thicker fabric, you would. But because this is such thin silk, you probably don't. I haven't done so. Anyway, I'm going to leave that to cool down a bit. So here we have a selection of, I think, almost every single spoon we have in the house. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit, I'm going to pull out the petals. Now, look, this, just like this. You need to cool them down a bit because otherwise they'd be too hot for me to handle, but they do cool down pretty quickly. Obviously the big petals, you put on the bigger spoons. Now, the trick here is not to put the whole petal on the spoon, just the main part of it, so that these bits, you can see, will bend over and give the petal lovely individual shapes. And that's all I'm going to do. It's really not rocket science. It's easier if you separate out the sizes so that the bigger ones go on the bigger spoons, but it's not crucial. But also if you keep the bigger ones together, then when you're constructing the rows, it's easier to find the right size for the next one you want to put on. Now I'm going to just carry on putting these on spoons. Here's a little one. So I'll put that on a little spoon. <laughs> Lost my little spoons. I'm going to put this one here. Just let it drape over like that. Um, so I'm going to carry on doing this and I'll come back to you when I've done them all. So as you can see, I have all of my petals now laid out. These are my eight large ones. These are my eight medium sized ones and these are my eight small ones and I've already started to take them off. And what I've started doing is if you just take a cocktail stick, put it under like this, just roll it and you get that really nice curl on the petal and then when you bring it round you get that lovely little edge which is so crucial for making the middle of the rows look more realistic. Now I'm going to move over to the ironing board because it's at a better height and I'm going to show you this is my center which I cut earlier I'm going to show you how I put it all together although I think you can probably guess um, and what you'll need for this part is a needle and thread and although you're not actually going to see the thread I've just chosen thread to show you with, against my navy jumper. I've chosen thread which is roughly the same colour as the petals. So all of my petals are dry and I'm now ready to put the rose together. I have my bud, my sponge bud, and I have my cocktail stick, 
and I have all of my petals laid out and I put them out according to size so I've got small, medium and large so that I can construct my rows in the right order. So first of all taking my bud I'm going to just, here's my thread and, and needle, I'm just going to put a couple of stitches through here to secure the thread. Um, the reason I'm not using glue to attach the, butt, the um, petals is because any glue that you add is going to make the flower bulkier and heavier and since this is going to be used for things like hats you want it to be as light as possible. Anyway, so let me first of all take my first petal. First petal is quite important. You um, want it to be higher than the sponge because you don't want to see the sponge at all and literally you just, nothing clever about this, you literally just swirl it round like that so you just have that tight little curl at the top and then you just put a couple of stitches through and believe me there is no skill involved in the sewing that takes place on the construction of this rose it's just literally to hold the, the um, petals in place you won't see any of these stitches at all which is probably a good thing <sighs> looking at the way these are going in anyway So there we are. So that's the first one. And when you look down inside a rose, the petals in the centre are quite tightly, quite tightly put together. So that's what I'm aiming to um, make happen here. So now I'm going to take my second petal. Um, and it, whenever you put petals onto a rose, you mustn't line them up one behind the other. You put them where the centre of this petal, the new one to go on, is going to cover where the edges of the previous one were. So if I can just show you like that. Now, this one is going to be barely visible. I'm just going to wrap this one round as well. Like that. And again, I'm just going to put another couple of stitches in. It doesn't look very much at the moment, but don't worry about it. It will literally bloom in now, your hands. This little bit here, I always like to just have a little bit of a curve on this second petal. So what I'm going to do is literally just roll it round the pointed end of this cocktail stick. So I hope you can see, and you can once it's taken the curl, you can sort of roll it in your fingers a little bit. Come on, curl, curl. There we are, just a little bit like that. Now, next one. I'm not going to show you every single petal, but I'll keep going until you get an idea of what it's going to be like. I don't like that one, I'm going to take this one instead. It's bizarre, but as you're, <laughs> as you're constructing your um, rows, you'll just, it will just form in your hands and you'll just see which petals want to go where and how they fit nicely together. So I'm just going to put a couple of stitches through here. Now, I want to make this curl a little bit, so I'm just going to take my cocktail stick and I'm going to just roll, if you can see that, this little edge. Now, if you, wanted, if you want a tight roll, then you pick a very narrow um, stick to roll it round like that. Can you see that's a lovely little tight roll there? If you wanted it um, as a looser roll, then pick something that's got a wider diameter than that. So, for example, a pencil, I guess, would be a really big, big roll for the outer petals. For these, I want them to be tight because it's right in the middle of the rose. I want it to be quite a neat. There we are. Can you see? So we've got two little curling petals there, but they're done very neatly. It's very small and tight, the whole thing. I'm just going to put a stitch through here to hold that curl in place. Now with the petals at the centre, it's the top bit that you'll see. So what you want to do is you sew towards the top. You won't see these stitches because they'll be covered by the outer petals. And then as you work towards your outer petals, you can sew further down and then the petals will open up like this. I'll show you when I get to them. So I'm going to carry on 
um, sewing at the moment and I'll show you when I've got a bit further with this rose. So I just want to show you here, I'm just putting on the medium sized petals now. You can see it's nice and tight in the middle with the small petals um, and, and just sort of the small amount of curling but quite tight curling on the edge of the petals. Now with the bigger ones, the medium sized ones that I'm putting on now, I'm starting to sew further down so that they're starting to open up and it's literally blossoming in my hand. This will be my next one to go on and you can see what I mean. We're really getting the shape of the rose coming now but I just wanted to tell you about um, some of the petals drying, an odd thing that might happen, which is, let me show you with this one. Can you see here that you've actually got the edge of the spoon showing through on the petal? Um, the reason this has happened is because I was in a hurry to dry my petals, so I used a hot air gun and I literally blasted it in that direction. So it took the shape of the spoon underneath. What would actually have been better is to hold it further back and as I was drying it to lift the petal like this to get rid of that ridge. But we are human and this is a small piece of fabric so we can bend it to our will. And all you literally have to do is just manipulate it in your hand. And actually look, this is another way of curling. You can just roll like this with your fingers. Because it's got a certain stiffness to it once it's got the gelatin in it, it's actually quite easy to manipulate. Um, and you can just sort of do any old thing with it. You see, you can just make it bend in any direction and get rid of that. And also the other thing is that because it's going on here and not on the outside, um, you won't see that once the rose is put together. Right, I'm going to carry on and I'll show you when I've got to the big petals. So here we are, I've nearly finished. This is the rose so far. I'm going to put, just put another couple of petals on and then I think that will be enough. Um, the thing about these roses is that although they feel or look very delicate, in fact, it's just um, stiffened fabric so you can, you can manipulate them and move them around quite a bit to, um, to make them go where you want them to go. Um, so don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid to sort of move it around. Um, so here's my, actually I think I'll just put this, this will be my last petal. So I just want to have a look to see roughly if there's anywhere that's shouting I need another petal and I think maybe, no, perhaps not, maybe just there. So I'm just going to position it here and I'm turning it upside down literally I'm just going to put a couple of stitches through the back here right at the base so that this petal opens out quite a lot as a normal rose petal would do. I'm going to do it both sides so it doesn't come adrift. There we are. And then I'm going to just put a couple of stitches in to secure the thread and cut it off. Now, if when you examine it, there we are, that's your finished rose. If when you examine it, you've got any little frays, as I have, for example, just in here, you literally just snip those off. as you're going to be using this to accessorise something and not handling it all the time, it shouldn't fray again. And there we have it. A little bit of... There we have a beautiful handmade original rose.